starting right from the R&D, I moved towards the entire uh, you know, value chain that we operate. The next sector would be, when we start with the R&D, next would come is the manufacturing. In the manufacturing, again, uh, mid-sized companies in India primarily are still on the manual. We are all looking towards moving to the digital mode where we are working on electronic BMRs, we are doing everything on the electronic uh, platform. It's still a transition phase for all of us. Uh, then we come into the sales and marketing when we are looking at the products. Distribution, almost all companies have moved into a more digitized system. Most companies have their own ERP systems. So that part is taken care of. The next part comes is the actual sales and marketing. Mid-sized companies, we are looking primarily into achieving the ability of ensuring that our field force is effectively utilized. It's a large part of our uh, costs that we have a large field force and how do we utilize this field force. As a company, we have done a lot in this area. We have, uh, in the last four or five years, we have kind of transformed the way our reps go and meet doctors, report this data. Uh, Amit rightly mentioned that, that you know we have this tendency to write because we are on a manual reports. It's transformed to today. Most of our reps are reporting through the mobile devices right from the location, giving us real time data. We the biggest challenge for us is even though we have this data, how well are we utilizing it, converting it? Now the volume of data over the last four years that I have seen has grown to be humongous. But have I been able to utilize it effectively? Still not. Am I able to create predictive movements based on what history has been created? Not yet. That's where we are looking at uh, using our, uh, <coughs> you know, that's where we are looking for the digital support. And in the marketing side, we are looking at how to engage the patients, how to ensure that uh, when somebody has been prescribed a drug, how well does he receive it? As you rightly mentioned, everybody at work looking towards uh, uh, going to Google, checking out, okay, what's this drive? Why is it? Why was it so I prescribed this drive? Should I really take it? People are making their decisions on their own. No longer are they dependent on doctors. Sorry, doctor. But that's the reality. <laughs> doctors are uh, just being uh, questioned, challenged. Not because they don't trust the doctors. It's because they people have access to information. The moment you have access to information, everybody needs to understand whether they really are having the right time. Can we engage those patients, make sure that their compliance is better, can we give them better outcomes, that's what we are looking for. So this is the areas we are looking at, at the current point. I won't take more time, I'm sure my colleagues here from the industry will be able to add much more. Uh, okay, so I, I go second. Uh, so, um, the question was basically, uh, what keeps us awake in terms right. of you know digitization of right. uh, pharma space? And what are the priorities? And what are the priorities? <laughs> so I do wear multiple hats: a consultant hat, and I'm also sitting on a venture capital company. So I'll talk from both angles. From a consulting angle, definitely I do see uh, the pharma space in India, especially in India lagging behind as you know, Kiran also mentioned in terms of adopting technology uh, more so in the small and medium uh, pharmaceutical size the larger pharmaceuticals are still adopting technology to some extent but then there are gaps uh, like for example the research side the research side is completely a blank right now I mean almost so drug research, new molecule research, a uh, lot of bioinformatics, a lot of you know drug uh, discovery platforms. A lot of that has happened in the West, but it hasn't sort of percolated down to India. Uh, there could be multiple reasons for it. There could be business reasons, but then there's also a technology reason because the technology industry hasn't been able to you know, come forward and support the industry, uh, that is the pharmaceutical industry, to adopt that space. Primarily, India has been a generics uh, market or a generic producer. But then, how long will we continue to be the you know, uh, 
generic drug uh, uh, major, so to say. There is a time when we have to flip and start doing uh, large molecule research, sorry, small molecule research uh, and competing with the big pharma. And the time is coming fast because uh, there is a level playing field that is emerging from an industry perspective, from a regulatory perspective, and we will have to compete with the larger multinational pharmaceutical companies which already come with a complete digital platform that is supporting them and the wars as I see it are going on in the courts right now that you know um, because the way we look at it from a regulatory perspective in India is different because in India we don't have a molecule based patent it is a process based uh, you know copyright so um, so I'm, I'm sort of deviating a little bit but yeah so that's from a consulting perspective but uh, when I look at it from a VC perspective, I would have evaluated uh, a lot of companies in the last about six months, about 30, 40 companies in the startups, um, and, and which are not really startup. They've got some angel funds, they've got uh, uh, the, you know uh, the, the first level of funds, and then they come to a VC and say, you know, we want to expand further. And my uh, looking at the market is slightly broader than just pharma. So we do look at pharma tech, insurance tech, and uh, health tech. There are disease management companies. There are chronic diseases which you know companies are going after. There are a lot of companies that are trying to find innovative models of dealing with the disease burden. But what is happening is each one of them is trying to find a very small niche uh, solution and going after solving that, forgetting that healthcare is an ecosystem. Healthcare being an ecosystem means the value of, the financial value of the healthcare ecosystem always accrues either to the pharma side or to the payer side. Now, if you have to do that, then you have to play yourself as if you are plugging into the ecosystem and then you're not a standalone entity. That is something that has been missing. Uh, in, in every startup that I've seen, uh, very few out of 30, 40, we've been able to get only about two or three, you know, which are really, I can say that, okay, I can do something with it. The second thing is from the pharmaceutical industry perspective, which Dr. Amit actually you know, mentioned so beautifully about uh, all the technology they are using, but uh, compliance and counterfeit drugs. These are two major issues. So drug compliance, a person wants to call off the drug. Uh, so, you know, there's a cultural issue in India. You know, uh, whether it's a chronic disease or whether it is a life threatening disease, you know, and they follow the uh, compliance to the, to the drug. So, you need technology that can support it. CRM technology is there, mobile health is there, social media is there. I work with Indian Cancer Society and a couple of others, uh, you know, which are in the social uh, sector. And they're using a lot of technology to like, you know, uh, survival groups, people who are already having the, the, the uh, disease and then, you know, they, they would want to counsel the others in terms of how they can deal with the disease. Now, these are things which are emerging, but then there are not too many solutions out there. So that, that's what is sort of troubling me that the industry needs to figure out that you know you need to involve the insurance and you need to involve the not so much of insurance because insurance is small in India but the payer side um, that can be a various kinds of payers uh, and, and the pharmaceutical industry as well as the healthcare ecosystem is concerned which is sort of lacking. So there are two words which always give sleepless nights to me most of the time. One is productivity. The second one is ROI. These are the two things which always haunt every marketer or a salesperson. Or probably when you're talking about a transformation into a digital era, every time is there a, whatever I'm investing, is there a return on that is the fundamental question every investor asks for. Okay. So when we're talking about productivity, uh, now in pharma industry, there is a hygiene which has been already created, whether it is small pharma or big pharma, that everybody is on a CRM system, some kind of CRM system, whether you're talking about a 
every web today doesn't carry a visual aid which we talk about in the old era, which is a paperback, paperback system kind of a thing, where he keeps turning. I think most of the pharma companies have moved through a tablet, because today you're talking about a tablet which you can get for 5,000, 8,000 or 9,000 uh, with PDF files there detailed. This is the base which has already been set. The transformation has already happened. But is that giving you productivity? Is the fundamental question. Like uh, my colleague had said here, there is a lot of data which is there, which is pouring in from all corners. Whether you're talking about India, each pharma company, big pharma has got 5,000 representatives, which is their million. And medium, you're talking about 2,000 representatives. Small, you're talking about 500. That is the ticket to play. And that's the kind of data which is pouring in, whether you're talking about his visits, whether his time spent in the clinic, whether he's spending his time or not, whether he's detailing P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, or whether he's effectively detailing the page I want to detail. So you're talking about multiple data points which are pouring in. And also the doctors whom I'm meeting, are the right kind of doctors, am I segmenting them, profiling them in a proper fashion or not? You're talking about multiple data points. Are these multiple data points converging into a meaningful insight for a marketer or a salesperson that I'm doing the right thing at that right moment? Is the fundamental question, I don't think still pharma industry or industry at large have got an answer for it. Even we at Dr. Reddy's, yes, we have certain systems, we are reviewing things, we are moving forward, but did we reach there? Not yet. It's a process which is going on, and particularly when we are operating in an emerging market setting, with multiple countries, handling multiple countries for a market is a nightmare. Because you're talking about customers, their behaviors are different, the way they act is different, doctors are different, <coughs> and even the behavior of the representative itself is different. And the models are different because at some place it's a payer model, some place you're talking about a self-pay model. <coughs> there are different models which are there. And across segments, you're talking about an RX, OTC, and the hospital. The moment you pick OTC, the way you reach the consumer is different. So we're talking about a multiple model system has a real, really digital transform, not yet. Added to that, the cultural sensitivity, which I was talking about when Amit was presenting, the cultural part of it. Okay. Are, are we actually treating the representative who's actually going to use these digitals, whatever technologies you call it, all the instruments. Are we working on them? Are we training them? How much time it is going to take? It is not just from a point of view of implementation saying that I brought in this. But is my representative really trained to use that? Or the person back in the factory? That is a point. Added to this, once you are investing all these things, where is the ROI? Are we able to prove that all these technologies are giving an ROI? Everybody is investing in it. But where is the end to it? Today you're talking about an iPad or a CRM system, whatever it is. Things keep changing. You are evolving. 1.0 to 2.0 to 3.0 to 3.2.1. Everything costs. <laughs> where is the end to it? So these are the two things I think still there's a lot of things need to be done and to be covered. And most of it, at the end of the day, are we providing the right kind of insights? End of the day, what all, what is that matters at the end of the day to get that ROI, insights, insight. When you're talking about digital transformation, even to my own IT team, they gave me tons and tons of Excel data. Converted into different formats, whether it is Microsoft Access or Pivot Table. But is it giving me insights? Is the fundamental question which will give me those answers to that productivity and ROI. So when you're talking about digital transformation, there are two additional things which we need to add. The culture part of it, which is a human angle. The second one is, it's not data what everybody wants, it is insights. These are the two things I think, if we focus more on that, more value can be generated out of whatever meaningful transformation we need.
Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned um, productivity also is another. Um, um, what any? How do you see productivity being, uh, you know, a challenge or an issue or you know, trying things? I, I think you gave one example of you know training, not training the the salesperson on how to use the tool is one you know productivity challenge. But how many doctors can cover? You know things like that, right? But are there any other productivity related? So when we are talking about uh, productivity uh, related issues, you take a typical brand manager. Okay, his brand needs to perform. His marketing, if you take India as a typical situation, he has at least 600 to 700 representatives under his hold. Now, what is the kind of data he is getting back once he gives the strategy to the representative? Okay. So, second thing, if you are talking about a particular state. Whether that state is productive, what are the insights coming out of it if the strategy is implemented, which is through a CLM, which is the closed loop marketing. Now, whether the rep is detailing that product or not. Now, vis a vis this, if somebody is successful, whether he is repeating the same thing or not. Again, it, it falls back, when you are talking about productivity, it falls back to joining the dots, whether you are doing well, not doing well. What are the insights out of that data points which are coming out in that? Comparing with where I am not doing well. Probably are they matching, not matching? Is there, is there a human element there? Or is it the customer is reacting to a particular communication to me? So end of the day when we are talking about productivity part, am I able to join the right dots where I am doing well, not doing well? Can be one more example which we can put it in, typically from a marketing point of view. Thank you. Just to add, um, see, the biggest challenge is we are using multiple communication modes and uh, rather rightly pointed out, there could be a human element. Two people have delivered exactly from the digital track, we see that both of them have done the same things. So many variables are there. You have a customer variable. The response for the same set of digital inputs could be vastly different. Because there are two elements which are purely human. One is the sales rep, two is the customer. Both of them can respond in absolutely different uh, ways. So even on the uh, customer front, if you do a profiling, you map down, you say that customers look similar, feel similar, but at the end of the day, no two human beings are similar. This is the reality. And you rightly pointed out, the biggest challenge is there's so much of data pouring. Now, it is not possible for a brand manager to sit through and sifle through this data to get something. What we really require is insights. Okay, this has happened. This is looks like A, B, C, D steps are the right steps to create a higher probability of results, higher probability of conversions in given territories. Then we should use the digital capabilities to pass this information back in real time to the reps saying that, well guys, if you do these two additional steps, you have done these two, you do these two additional steps, better probability of business. This is just at the beginning. At the longer side, if you are seeing, today it's a real mad rush for the wife to go and meet the doctor. It's really challenging for him. So if he gets a few minutes, how does he maximize that? There's a huge travel time. And we have all the doctors across the country. If he misses one doctor, how does he meet the other doctor? Can we have through the system, something says that probability of hitting this doctor today seems to be low based on historic data, based on all the other division data. This is the kind of information which we require and which will actually make the digital support to the events. Can I uh, sort of throw a digital spin to the thinking of uh, both Raja and Kiran? Uh, so, you know, everything that you said about the medical representative going to the doctor. Now, all of us know that healthcare is a B2B2C business. It is not a B2B per se. But then, you know, there is a limitation, a physical limitation of the medical representative going to the doctor. It becomes a B2B. So the C part, which is actually the end patient, 
that is sort of hidden somewhere. But technology gives you that advantage of making it truly B two B two C, going into the pocket of the customer, the end consumer, and then converting the business from a push business to a pull business. Now the technology, if you take mobile health, combine it with artificial intelligence, because big data is pretty much you know getting converted into artificial intelligence now, machine learning, and it sort of you know starts telling you that the drug pattern, the disease pattern, it also tells you when the drug is going to finish, when the refill is required. It also tells you when the patient needs to go and have a doctor visit. It also tells you when a patient has not gone for the follow up or he has he or she has switched to the doctor. It also tells you when the labs were due and the labs have not been done. Now, isn't it in the interest of the pharmaceutical company to be institutionalizing those disease management programs with technology backbone and make sure that you are in the pocket of every consumer and saying that I want to be contacting, like for example, uh, you know, a pharmaceutical company would be very interested in dealing with a diabetic patient uh, directly rather than through the doctor. I mean, of course, the doctor is very important in the game. In the, the doctor is the gatekeeper, but why not make it B two B two C? Why just limit yourself to B two B? So, just a little different spin to the thinking. Just maybe I'll uh, see. End of the day, I think Amit Shah showed one last line about the past success. What do you think, Christensen has said? Yeah. Fundamentally, when we are talking about today, there are different levels of problems which we talk about when we think of a pharma industry. And like what Amit also said, that in silos, most of the companies are working at different, different levels. And when you're talking about a customer, there are people, companies who are working from a customer-centric point of view. It also depends on the portfolio, what you have. Can I offer the entire portfolio to the particular customer who's diabetic? And if I say that, can I offer all the allied services? Or is it that pharmaceutical company will tie up with an all health kind of a person who is already there in the ecosystem. But again, fundamental level today, most of the pharmaceutical industry, the entire pharmaceutical industries and pharmaceutical companies are grappling with basic needs. Okay. People are moving at different levels and different paces. It always happens in the industry. I'm not saying no to it, that there are different some is, someone is a pace creator, someone is a follower, but there is a fundamental rule is irrespective of whatever happens in digital transformation, for the next 5 to 10 years, or probably 15 years, we can't do away with the medical world. Because we are a generic industry. We are a generic, we are part of generic industry. For example, if you are talking about an MNC, today, I will give you an example, in Russia, all the MNCs, reach to the doctor through ETT. And doctors want to know more about it because they have not been able to give enough time in the clinic to understand about the product. And if he has to understand and prescribe this product, probably he would like to spend more time on the net, on his laptop or desktop or whatever it is, to know more about the product. So people are more because MNC, they only can give this and pass this information to the doctor. Because it's a patented molecule, in that point of time, nobody else can talk about it. They have their own data on the clinical trials, and people have moved. So you're talking about, in, even in pharma industry, there are two types of it. Within that, you have a generic industry and you have an MNC industry. So MNCs have moved forward, and they only can understand this disease area. They can manage this better once the drug is given from them. What kind of side effects? <clears throat> what kind of side effects happen to the patient, how they need to be managed. So they directly talk to the customer. There are apps which are created. Okay, That's a different journey which an MNC or an innovator molecule is doing. But by and large, in the Indian pharmaceutical context, you have generic companies and branded generic companies. 
So the problems which are associated with generic companies are different from MNCs. Yeah, that's where. Yeah. So you need to look at not pharma industry. You need to further segment it yeah. and target it according to the problems, what they have, and what kind of solutions they are seeing. Yeah. Yeah, really, thank you so much. So, one of the questions that I have next was generally talking about the barriers that you guys face, but it, it seems like in majority of your conversations, you mentioned some of the pain points that occur as well as what keep, you know, what, what are the priorities that are keeping you away. So, I'm going to, I'll skip that and, and at least from, from, an, from a general country interest perspective, whenever we read newspapers, we often hear about regulatory compliance that impact in a big way for pharmaceutical companies. I, I know we've heard that word being uttered here several times as well. With new technologies coming in play, how do you think that is going to have, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to have a positive impact. What we would like to hear are perhaps what your initiatives have been to encounter and make sure that your compliance is, is well intact. And two, if you know of any success factors that have been done here in India or elsewhere, if you can deliberate upon that, that would be great. So when you are looking at the regulatory compliances, it's uh, primarily at the manufacturing end. And uh, I think during the discussion it had come up, the biggest challenge is the culture change. You might bring in all the technology you can, but you need to change right from the chemist who is at the shop floor, right to the QC chemist, every single person needs to change his approach. That's the biggest challenge we face. Companies are moving into having more technology, trying to do away with any kind of paper, trying to have even, uh, now I do understand, I'm not from the manufacturing side, but there are technologies which are available where you're getting most of your data directly, IoT. Like you have a simple thing like HVC, room temperatures, pressures, all these details are automated in the systems. Now, these will definitely do a positive impact in your you know, reducing the compliance issues which we are facing. Most importantly, it is the mindset here which needs to change. Larger companies with uh, you know, possibly US FDA approved facilities already have quite a bit of uh, IoT integrated into their processes. Smaller companies which have uh, non-regulated, uh, basically operating in India and under unregulated markets, do not have the challenges which we see with uh, most of the news that you hear is from the US or the regulated markets. The, in the unregulated markets, where do we see these issues? We see these issues when we are registering drugs, when we are giving them the data, the basic data, we see inconsistency in data. Once we convert most of our manufacturing process or even the R&D process into a digital format. We hope that these will come down significantly. In fact, uh, when you're talking about this 483 USFDA, it has become a kind of uh, beast in the mind of the pharmaceutical manufacturers. Now, is it because of the process or is it because of something else? I don't think any pharma company, big pharma in particular, if you have to say, they have all the processes in place. But US regulator himself has changed the way he is inspecting. We need to understand that. It is not just that Dr. Reddy's is not following the process or Sun Pharma is not following the process. It is not about that. For example, Dr. Reddy's has invested 200 crores in terms of modernizing, digitizing all its manufacturing facilities to the IoT of things, across all the lines what we have. They know that technology can be bought, but can you change the human culture is what they're actually looking at. Now, in actually following this human culture, for example, if a person writes it on a book, can this book also be digitized? Saying that the moment he writes, there are no papers. Next to every HPLC, what you have done, just write it, What even if you want to scribble. Today we all have notepads where you can scribble and save the paper. Probably that can be converted through a machine technology 
into plain text and can be saved. Even if you want to draw a graph, even if you want to cut, you can you can say the whole thing what they are looking at. If you are writing something, did you erase it and write afresh on something else, or did you save a new Excel file overwritten on it? Is what basically they are doubting our integrity. What they are saying is, are you showing me the good things? Is what they are looking at. And what Amit had said from an Western world kind of thing to an Indianized thing, from a culture point of view. Can we kind of bring in some kind of transformation there into a culture which can become part of culture? Today, five years back, smartphone is not part of culture of India. Anyone sitting here, we are just talking. But today, smartphone has become a culture in ourselves. Can this also be brought into a shop? Whatever he is doing, he will write. Even if you walk into any pharmaceutical company, the SOPs which are written are paper bank. If you go and walk into any pharmaceutical company manufacturing plant, the SOP which is written there is signed by four people, which is a paper bank. So when you're talking about a transformation, it starts from there. The one which is there on the wall. SOP stands for standard, standard operating procedure. From a regulatory perspective, uh, see, I, I am a little unique here because I have worked with uh, multinational pharma companies doing digital transformation work for them in the West, in the US, and a couple of other places. And then, sort of, I came back, started focusing on the Indian market, and I sat on the policy table in the Indian market. Um, I was the guy who wrote the better data standards for the digital health in India. I mean, I was leading the team that, that did that. And while we were doing it, we uncovered a lot of things from a regulatory perspective in India. Uh, some of the things that I can highlight. Uh, one, we still don't have a drug index in, it, in this country. What we have is an NPI, National Pharmaceutical Index, which is actually a generics drug index, and it's not even complete. In India, for ciprofloxacin, I think we have 160 different brands or more. Uh, sort of a you know a policy that you the, all the doctors have to just write generics. Now that's fine, but then where is the reference database? We don't have it. From a reporting perspective, the entire pharmaceutical industry in India is reporting up to the Ministry of Chemicals and Petrochemicals uh, and Fertilizers. Now very little or dotted line relationship with the Ministry of Health. Now the change has been done in the current government, but it's not complete. They've made that change, but it's, it's sort of, you know, um, it, it's lopsided. There are lots of those things. I mean, I won't go into all that. We wrote a full report, it's available. Somebody can go and read it. But there's a whole list of regulatory issues which need to be corrected for the industry to come to a stand and say, okay, now we are ready to do digitalization. But without that, now, you know, blockchain, for example, uh, Amit mentioned blockchain has given uh, uh, for, for counterfeit of drugs. Now, counterfeit of drugs, blockchain from one company is possible. But if you had to do industry-wide, you need a registry, a drug registry. For that, you need standard. It doesn't exist. So, there are a lot of those gaps. Somebody has to fill those. I, I know this audience so perhaps know far greater than we do. Anybody has questions for the panel that you'd like to have? Amit, you, you have any perspective on the questions that have been asked? Uh, we talk about regulation and uh, everything and we, why don't we develop a standard digitized platform which works for all the pharma organizations so that we do not get into those compliance issues. Everybody is investing in their own and modernizing their platform but there is no standard I mean the industry the IT industry also has to come up with a with with certain platform which is standard in nature for all farmers what do you think so in terms of uh, standard for pharma when you're talking about a typical if you take a paracetamol 
how do you analyze paracetamol or a tablet of paracetamol whether it contains paracetamol or not? There are pharmacopoeias which define this. Similarly, the manufacturing procedures which need to be followed as GMP, they're already there. Now, and if you think of regulators, whether you're talking about Indian regulator, USFDA or UK MHRA or MCC in South Africa or Russian MOH or Ukrainian MOH or European regulator. Each of these have their own standards which are already published. When you're saying that I have to export a product to USFDA, there's a particular standard which is already defined by US regulator what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. For that, I need to submit a register Whatever I am saying that my drug contains this X, Y, Z is already I am confirming that. Now, am I doing it on a regular basis without even missing? Because all of these standards are already there. It is not that it is not there. And we are complying to all that. Most of it when you take it backwards and manufacturing this drug, batch after batch after batch, am I following all these standards or not? How will I ensure that I become mechanical? When you're talking about a BMW or a Mercedes, when it is manufactured in Germany, if you actually look at their standard operating procedures, what they follow, even to the micro, as well as to get there. Because it is not that standards are not there. Standards are very defined. The entire pharma industry, whether it is small, big, medium, they all know about it. And forget about it. We are pro When I'm submitting a dossier to a regulator, what is it I'm doing? I am promising as a pharmaceutical company that I'm going to deliver this quality product to you. The uh, dossier is that, yeah. So I was not referring to the, the standards of, I was referring to the, uh, when we have a digital platform which, uh, you know, you know uh, has a standard which, which provides all the answers to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the FDA or any regulator, if they that that platform meets that requirement, I think our forehead trees and other things can reduce. Is what I was referring to. Sir, yeah. Sorry. yeah. Let, let me try. Um, so um, there are three parts to this. One is an IT part. Second is a device part. Third is the pharmaceutical part. And there are regulations for all the three. If you look at it from an IT perspective, it uh, reports up to the Ministry of IT. All the devices, when you talk about IoT or any medical devices, they all the way report up to Bureau of Indian Standards and through that, uh, there's a dotted line to a small group which is combined with Bureau of Indian Standards and uh, Department of IT. So, electronic and IT. So they sort of, you know, there's a group there which regulates this. Um, but then, largely we look outside the country to, say, FDA or for electronic devices, we look to, uh, you know, other standards which are global standards. We look at CE standards or whatever. In India, what has happened is, now if you were to break standards, like that's, that's the attempt that we made, by writing uh, the EHR standards from a healthcare provider perspective and then the metadata standards which are larger healthcare perspective, you know the larger healthcare canvas, not just narrow clinical. Now to do that we had to bring Ministry of IT and Ministry of Health together and then write it and we had to go all the way up to the planning commission, get it into the 12th plan, get it in, uh, written down and then the current government has been, you know, uh, showing the same interest and bringing it into implementation. Now it is part of the Digital India program and the latest National Health Protection Scheme has been announced based on all this work which has happened in the past. So the standards are now there, now it's a matter of implementation. Now for when you come to the implementation side, the, it's not just the regulatory side, it is also the industry which has to step forward. Now the industry, it's, it's the turn of the industry to step forward and say, well, there's a good work which has been done, let's adopt it. Now that, I'm sorry to say the industry has been extremely large on it. 
uh, not just laggard, industry has actually put stumbling blocks and said, we don't want it. Now, something has to be done about it. I don't know. I was referring to the second one, the implementation. Right. So the implementation is, you know, the handshake cannot be done by one hand. It will have to be both. Thank you so much. Uh, um, unless somebody has questions, but for a brief period of time, we've, we've already shot uh, way past our things, and and we'd like uh, uh, this next session to start. So, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pankaj Gupta. I know you came in from Delhi. We really appreciate it. Not not to say that any Hyderabad guys are lesser, and I'm not taking the trouble, but to fly out in an evening like this is really appreciated for you, uh, Kiran. Really appreciate it. We certainly will will stay in touch and. Uh, Mr. Raja. Student, I have a few questions before you wrap up. Do we have a mic? Yeah. Thank you. So, just real quick, uh, in terms of aligning to the business and as technology leaders have been able to enable the productivity and business outcomes, how is technology perceived uh, from a budgetary perspective? Are we proactively going out there and saying, yes, I'm going to be a portion of the company's budget? Uh, is it really related to the revenues and is it just a percentage? Are we reactive in the way we invest in digital transformation or, or is it something we're actually pursuing uh, out there? I, I promise I'll pay for the beers. It's just one. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a very straightforward question, and it was an expected question at some time. But uh, yes, every company is now proactively looking at uh, making its uh, IT budgets, looking at what more needs to be done. And uh, every company, irrespective of size, is understanding the value that IT brings in. So every company allocates a particular amount for the IT requirements and for all the digital transformation. <coughs> Budgets vary based on the revenues we earn at the top line, that's the only thing. And yes, we look at it from a longer uh, part line, not just at one year do I get my ROI on the same year. I look at it from a three to five years Range as to how is this going to change my company, my performance, and how do I get my results? Thank you. And, and that's the reason why I ask. I, I, we're, on a, we're in the middle of a digital revolution, we're in the middle of an industrial revolution, which is the data, but it's insights what we want to get, it's, it's information. So, so where I, I Running the old IT shop, it's like, yes, you know, we did X many support guys to go and fix the printer. You know, it's it. Are we ready to actually go and tell the business and sit right to the CEO and say, no, this is what we need to be doing to prepare for the next 10 years? So, so thanks that you answered my question. I think the pharma industry is a, in a cash flow situation. And you're talking about a lot of investment goes into RD, it's manufacturing sector, getting approvals in time. Okay, a lot of investment. Added to that, you have a digital over that, which suddenly changed the entire dynamics of the profit and loss statement for pharma companies. Because everybody is running with digital, we don't have a choice, we also have to run. Now, that's where my first two words comes, which is productivity and ROI. Every pharma industry guy, because there's a lot is getting sucked into the back end from an R&D and manufacturing point of view. Am I getting money for the buck which I'm spending on the digital? Is the fundamental question every CEO asking. But there's no choice, we have to run. We have to be in this era of digital transformation. We have to update ourselves. We have to be there. But if you can come up with the right productivity mix and the ROI mix, where you can showcase it back, I think they will, everybody will laugh. Everybody will laugh. There's no doubt because I think uh, last month we had a digital transformation day within Dr. Reddy's for the first time. Okay. 
So every, we want to be there, but end of the day, everybody asks this single question, what is the ROI? That's a question which Prasad himself has asked the entire set of people who are sitting there. I am ready to invest, show me the ROI. That's what he's come back. And, and that's me, Sikta <laughs> Mahesh. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very informative. Um, I know we are already running late um, and the dinner is already waiting for us. We have one last thing uh, before we head out to the awards and dinner. Um, we have a 15 minutes, a maximum of 15 to 20 minutes of walk session. And then we have awards after that, we'll all head out for the cocktail and dinner. Uh, please bear with us for another maximum 30 minutes.